St. Jamestown Residents Council hosts successful at Community Summit, Emerging Innovations and Ideas. St. Jamestown came alive on Saturday, May 11th, as residents gathered at the St. Jamestown Neighborhood Community Center for the highly anticipated 2024 summit, organized by the St. Jamestown Residents Council. With a remarkable turnout, the event showcased a diverse array of voices, ideas, and talents, reaffirming the vibrant spirit of this dynamic community. The summit, themed Emerging Innovations and Ideas, featured a lineup of engaging activities and insightful discussions. Throughout the day, attendees had the opportunity to participate in forums highlighting emerging grassroots groups. The event was made possible thanks to the generous support of funders and supporters, including the City of Toronto, the Community Crisis Response Program, and local community organizations. Organizers expressed gratitude to all who attended and participated, emphasizing the importance of collaboration and community engagement in driving positive change and development of St. Jamestown. My name is Randy Alexander, Noreen McLean, and we are the co-chairs of this year's St. James Town Residence Council Presents Summit 2024. The theme of this year's summit is Emerging Innovations and Ideas, and our concept this year was to bring together 10 emerging grassroots organizations that have all uh, developed and have uh, had foundations during lockdown and post-COVID and are now serving their community in diverse different ways. Today, so we started with a, uh, a network and breakfast and then we moved into a two-hour community forum where each organization uh, presented um, their mandates, their visions, and uh, then we had community Q&A. And then we had a multicultural lunch and then we moved into some intergenerational storytelling through artists. We had um, African drummers, we had Mexican clown artists, uh, we had opera performers, um, we had Caribbean um, dance crew in the house, and, uh, and then we're going to close the day off with some more Indigenous knowledge sharing and a smudging ceremony. The council came together with like because nothing else was being done by others, by um, um, just individuals. We knew that individuals couldn't really make much of an impact, but if we all got together and with our ideas and where we are um, recognized by like our councillor and our MP, our MPP, they recognize us. We do have a footprint and we are effective. We're new, we're young, we're growing, we're learning, but we, uh, we are effective and we, uh, we also have no problems expressing ourselves and letting others speak as well, which, um, which in other organizations can be a problem because they become bureaucratic. What we're going to try to do, if, correct me if I'm wrong, try to do is not to be as bureaucratic. And we need to let um, others know, like TCHC and the city and whatnot, to know that we are here, we do have a voice, and we are important. Don't ignore us. This event is important to create a space where organizations can come together and share their ideas, um, share their uh, motivation and their vision for what they're doing. It's also a way to build capacity, um, uh, introduce people to the organization so they can grow their membership, uh, they can increase their, uh, 
media presence, their marketing presence, um, get the word out what, what they're doing, what the programs they're offering and the services that they're offering. It's very important that every level of government engages in these community conversations at the ground level, um, specifically with our local city councillor. It's important for him to hear the voices of our community members and the struggles that they experience from their perspective. It's unvarnished, it's honest, it's real, um, and it's not removed from reality. Often what happens at City Hall is things um, become a bit cosmetic or a bit too bureaucratic, uh, whereas the conversations that we foster um, are authentic, genuine challenges that people are facing every day and we need less bureaucratic solutions that are compassionate and practical. I'm Yannick and I am a part of the St. James Towns Residence Council. I was a part of the planning committee to um, bring about this wonderful event and uh, so far my hopes for the event have been uh, greatly exceeded, like conversations have been really good. Um, I'm glad to see that all of these uh, organizations are in our corner with St. Jamestown and uh, I hope we can do more things like this in the future. This event is important because it helps to kickstart conversations about how to create something better and something bigger and something greater for the community and it just shows how resilient we are as a community. My name is Pepper. We have a group here. The name is True Colors. Uh, I am Randy, our co-founder for the programming running for a uh, all people or seniors uh, who are queer, you know, sometimes it's complicated to get a good space for seniors, for they can uh, singer like me, something like this. I have a background, I'm I'm from Mexico, I am artist in my country, I sing an opera, musical theater. Here I try to return to the, <laughs> to the show business the most as possible, but my idea is, uh, I think Randy and me in True Colors, the high is support the newcomers, support the seniors, for getting a space for, because the art is a form for expression, you know? And sometimes the lonely feelings can be hard, but we try to get a community, bring a microphone, a space, a sparkles, you know, for, for the community, and they can perform in like me. And, well, I try the performance the most as possible here in Canada. Sometimes it's complicated. I think the most important is, great community, all the people feeling happy. For example, when I performance, is the wherever I want to share, you know? The people feeling happy, the people are in this line. I think Canada only need this. Love, feeling connection, and I think it's this. My name is Megan and this is Iray and we're both with No Dem Evictions and we are a tenant collective that advocates against profit driven dem evictions and we do this by supporting tenants through organizing, education and action and we also do it through advocating for policy and legislative change. So we're here today as part of the St. James Town Summit to help spread um, the word about dem evictions, um, how they are affecting people uh, today and tomorrow, and to do some advocacy to talk about like what can we do as a community to help fight dem evictions, to help people keep people housed, um, to keep our affordable stock of affordable housing uh, available to the city of Toronto. We started organizing in early early 2023 and we started with building rallies. So we really started with some of the biggest buildings that were being dem evicted in the city of Toronto, um, bringing awareness to the issues, focusing on tenant stories and really humanizing the issue as best we could. And to point out that it's a systemic issue and that it's not just a couple of buildings, it's over a hundred buildings in the city of Toronto. And so we ended up in October of 2023 having a rally from City Hall to Queen's Park uh, to highlight that this is not only a municipal issue, but it's also a provincial issue, and a lot needs to change on both levels, all three levels of government. Um, and then in 
November or December, um, Jessica Bell actually put forward a legislation for a moratorium on dem evictions, which is one of our biggest asks at a provincial level. Obviously, under this current provincial leadership, that was not passed, um, but it just goes to show that the organizing efforts that we have put forth over the past year have started to make a real impact. And some of our most recent wins was that on April 18th, there were motions that were passed at City Council that will greatly help tenants who are facing dem evictions in terms of the compensation they receive to ensure that they can stay housed during the displacement period. So they're not going to end up on the street, they're not going to end up in the shelter system, or even have to leave the City of Toronto. Um, so we do a lot of policy advocacy, and we had a really big win that we're really happy about. So the best way that people can get involved with what we're doing is look at the information and resources that we have on our website at noademevictions.ca, but also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and TikTok, because everything that we do, every action, every workshop, everything that we do as a group, we share there. And lastly, to follow our newsletter. Um, anytime we do anything. It's posted to our newsletter and people can choose the level at which they want to be involved. They can come to our weekly meetings, they can share posts on social media, they can advocate within their community. There are many different ways to get involved and it all starts on the website. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ben from uh, Toronto Centre Tenant Union. And I'm Dan, also from Toronto Centre Tenant Union. We're a new organization. We were, I founded TCTU in November 2023, so a little over six months ago. And basically a tenant union is a group of tenants who come together to improve their situation. So uh, tenants in one building often have common problems. For example, the elevator doesn't work, or there's a hot water outage or some, something that's very common in our writing is the building is getting demolished and all the tenants are being evicted. And so ultimately, if, if tenants work together, they're a very powerful force compared to uh, tenants trying to fight it by themselves. And uh, yeah, we were inspired by York Southwestern Tenant Union in West Toronto. And yeah, hope, hoping for big things in the future. This St. Jamestown is fascinating. Um, so someone told me it's it's the densest area in Canada. I believe it when you see these these huge towers. Um, and to, to me, this is like a model for what our city could be like. Um, public housing, um, enough density for everyone to have a good place to live. Um, yeah, we just, just need to invest more in our housing to make sure that we have, have beautiful buildings that are well-maintained. Um, I think St. Jamestown is also cool because it's there's like co community here. You just feel it in this room, walking around the neighborhood, um, and there's a sense that like neighbors have each other's backs. And to me, we want to promote that. We want that throughout uh, this uh, Tor Toronto Center and throughout the city. I think as the Toronto Center Tenant Union. We are focused on organizing groups of people together to empower them. And I think the places you do that in are these sorts of events in different communities where they you see grassroots organizations that come together and empower each other really to you know fight back against landlords or develop their own community on their own in the ways that we want together. So I think that's why it's important to have these sorts of events as well. Hello everyone, uh, we are anti Amal Community Center. Uh, we are located in two, uh, loca we have two locations, one in St. James Town, which we started in it, and the other in Victoria Park. Uh, in 200 Willisley, uh, we started this, and we started 2013 uh, by furnishing 600 apartment, and then uh, we have uh, now lots of, uh, uh, like, if we, first we started to help Syria refugee, then now we are helping everyone with, uh, we, uh, anti-amal community center, 
we don't have colors we don't have uh, like we don't discriminate anyone anyone who is needy he can come to us and we are helping him uh, we are in St. James Town offering 1,000 meals weekly we have food bank which is covering 500 uh, families uh, uh, what brought us here because we are part of St. James Town and it's a summit so we are uh, meeting here all uh, other organization and to know something about what they are doing uh, but here in the area everybody knows us we have some uh, volunteers with us students from university we have our chiefs who are the best cook and uh, like all of us we are and we have this team who are dancers our dancer our future dancer for the future so anti amal community center is for everything for everybody and for every age, we have seniors, we have, uh, we have lots of pro programs uh, for, uh, as we say, about self-defense, about um, uh, teaching the kids, uh, dancing, uh, teaching French, uh, uh, some, uh, teaching them arts, yes. I'm Leanne and um, we're actually trying to learn dance because it's a nice way to express ourselves in different um, cultures, different languages and also if it weren't for Auntie Emma, for me, my beautiful grandma, <laughs> we wouldn't be that, that good at dancing. My name is Mirad and I love dancing with my um, dance teacher named Tarek. I love dancing with him because he teaches me so much dance moves and it makes me know more um, dance, um, more language dances. My name is Amir and I love dancing in Auntie Amal's community. Hello, uh, I'm Rua. I'm also part of Auntie Amal Community Center. Uh, we do a lot of programs. Uh, one of them is uh, the food uh, bank. We have uh, every uh, Monday food bank and uh, we distribute uh, healthy food uh, for people, vegetables, fruits and all the groceries. Uh, so you can uh, also find us on Facebook or Instagram and uh, uh, you can follow us and register to take your grocery too. Also, we have in St. James Town uh, in 200 Wilsley, we have a um, meal program. So uh, we have chefs uh, that uh, they cook uh, meals for the neighbors who have diabetes or special uh, health conditions. Uh, so we try to make healthy, fresh uh, food for them. Uh, we distribute this every week also. Uh, 1,000 meal is distributed for the uh, neighborhood uh, people who are registered with us also. One. Two, one, two, three, four. La 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 Erica May Farazi from the EcoJust Youth Co-op. Uh, EcoJust Youth Co-op is a youth-led initiative that was formed following the pandemic in a response to isolation and loss of community, um, closing of public places, especially for youth, um, as well as uh, schools becoming virtual. Um, so what we focus on is uh, bringing youth from the city to our partner farms to help farmers with their daily tasks, but also experience a day or morning out in nature, um, build relationships with other youth in the city who have like-minded goals and uh, passions for the future. And overall, our goal is to create the systems that will make the future for the next child easier than what we are facing today. This event has been incredibly helpful for us all of these emerging organizations to connect together because um, there is a big problem in the city with a lot of initiatives that start but there isn't a lot of communication between them um, and so this was a really great way to bridge those gaps and start uh, introducing some of these organizations to each other to inspire some collaboration I know that I've made some really great connections that 
I know are going to help my organization and I'm looking forward to helping others. And so it's just been a really great opportunity to, to talk about our collective plans for a better Toronto. Uh, could you please introduce yourself and tell me what brought you here today? My name is Snapping Turtle. I'm Ojibwe. And my clan is Moose. Pretty important for uh, most people, but if you can get uh, Indigenous people involved, that's even more important. Because uh, we nobody knows about us. Uh, nobody knows our stories. Nobody knows our... Uh, Language, nobody knows that we exist. So the more we get indigenous people involved in these uh, events, the more they'll get to know us. And the more they realize that we've had a lot of problems in the past. Ani Bojo, Anishna Kaz, woman who's as beautiful as the fire. My name is Tiffany. I'm the founder of the Toronto Indigenous Community Land Trust. We're a community-led initiative that is officially incorporated and we're really excited for what community is doing. We're bringing community together so we can create a pathway to create Indigenous-led solutions that are led by community for community. We see a great opportunity for social economical growth for community and we really want to create a strong foundation of community voices that come together and self-determine what they would like for the land. And the land is such a beautiful thing and we want to re-honor that Mother Earth and we want to take care of her and nurture her and so the Land Trust is going to do just that and we're also going to be really creating pathways to create housing and we want to be able to build housing and so we think about housing in such a way that we want the community to be able to come together and create these jobs and create these trades and what does it take to build a house? Because we're going to need you. And so please come on out and look at our Toronto Indigenous Community website. We're doing a lot of sharing circles and community events and we're currently on our membership drive. So we're looking to find you, our Indigenous community members, because we need you to be part of this really amazing initiative. And it's not just for Toronto. It's for the entire GTA and Turtle Island and our friends out in Georgina Island at the Minoaki Land Trust and the Toronto Indigenous Land Trust and all of the land trusts that are going to be growing and really doing amazing things. And we can't wait to be a part of it and we can't wait for you to be a part of it. So come check us out. Check out our website, Toronto Indigenous Land Trust. And check it out, Mikwich. Here in Toronto, there's 80,000 Apparently, First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people. Currently, there's 17 different nations that are here in Toronto. Currently, only five, I'll give it seven today. That's generous. There's 7% of the Indigenous community that is speaking for us. You might not know that. Throughout the city, they have an Indigenous Affairs Office. Within that collective, they're making the choices as it reflects to all city departments. Currently, there's a, an advisory committee. It's called the Aboriginal Affairs Advisory Committee. This committee has been non-existent for the last year and a half. They've been trying to figure out what to do, try to talk to community, see what this committee can do. Sadly, only 1% of the community only got spoken to. And so this week, at Executive Council for the City of Toronto, there's an agenda item. And this agenda item is going to really redefine the voices of community. And I sometimes wonder, who is the Indigenous community? Well, I'm really lucky I see one person and me, and I'm not too sure of anybody else. 
can identify as being First Asian, Métis, Inuit. But I'm really proud to see my brother here. There's been a lot that the Toronto Indigenous community has done. In Parkdale, some of you may know, there's a modular project that is happening. It's called the 150 Done Project. I've been quite passionately volunteering thousands and thousands of hours to really ensure that community has a voice. There's 52 units that are going to be created in the next couple months, this modular, beautiful home that's going to be there for our communities, all of our relations, the ones that are really struggling in hospitals, the ones that are really struggling who are episodically homeless. And in case some of you aren't aware, episodically homeless means people that have been homeless for years. And so this 150 Done was a beautiful initiative, and at the beginning, they really portrayed it for racialized and indigenous people. And I got really excited. I'm like, 52? We can get our community in there. And I fought for years. And I was really excited when I talked to Dr. Buzari in social medicine housing at the UHN, and he said, Tiffany, your advocacy got 25% of those units secured for our community. I did that, Mr. Moisey, all by myself. And I take the credit because that means that 25% of our community will be housed in a place that will give them a starting. And I understand that this small little collective is very small, but if everybody knows one Indigenous person, that can really build up what we're doing right now. Currently, we're going to be starting our membership campaign. You're going to see it. You're going to see it all throughout the city of Toronto. We want to find these 80,000 people. Some say there's more. But I'd like to find at least 10,000 of them because they're deserving to be heard, seen, and respected. And there's this idea that a lot of us think about, some may not have heard of it, it's called duty to consult. Duty to consult does encompass our indigenous relations that are around here. Six Nations, the Sons of the Credit, the Wendat, but it also includes the community that lives here. We are also part of this community. And duty to consult does not only skip some and hit some others. And so when I see this membership campaign that we're really going to be pushing, we really need our allies. Because our allies is who has continued to stand up for us. And we want to honor you. And we need you to help us get our community to really be a part of something huge. The city of Toronto has made a commitment they created this document called the Reconciliation Action Plan. This is a policy. This is in a policy that has been implemented for community. It says we are supposed to get back the land. Unfortunately, the city isn't ready to give us the land yet. We would like the land back, Chris Morris. And when we think about our city councillors, and the, also the fight, because many, many of you I haven't really shared, I'm born and raised in Regent Park. I lived at 508 Dundas all my life. My mom used to work at the Newtown restaurant. My dad used to drink in Pigeon Park. And so we think about these place-making places where we are. And I also think of all the trauma you know how much trauma I personally, which I'm not going to get into, I experienced just by living here. And so as I continue to heal, which I'm really honored to be able to have Mother Earth, to be able to have the ceremonies, to be able to have that sacred fire. Because did you guys know that there's a sacred fire happening right now? Hands up if you know that there's a sacred fire happening. There is a sacred fire happening, and it's been happening for over 16 months now. Gallon Gardens. And it's at Gallon Gardens. And that sacred fire is 
held by my bestest friend in the whole wide world, and I love her with all my heart. And it takes somebody a lot of courage to be able to hold that space down, knowing that Chris Moyes is getting emails from NIMBYism, from people who don't want us to be there. And did you know that that place has saved the lives of our community? That place has been a space where we can go to feel safe, where we can go to be part of ceremony, where we can go and be part of the spirit, to be able to feel nourished by Mother Earth when we are there. And we're also collectively community members, these grassroots collectives who aren't going to be included in this agenda item because currently the agenda item doesn't include indigenous partners that are outside of the TASAC. You know that. And yet, we're going to really be able to come together as, a, as an indigenous land trust, as someone who has been fighting for the 500 Dundas. Did you guys know about the 500 Dundas? So 500 Dundas is just down here by Regent Park. It's uh, um, this the place. It's the development um, show. Show. It's where you go if you want to sign up for a condo. It's 500 Dundas, basically. So basically, in the last two weeks, 500 Dundas that I've been fighting for to build co-op an indigenous co-op that is probably happening behind our back because it's going to be an affordable housing opportunity. Now, I don't know if anybody in here has access to money, knows a philanthropist, knows a developer, knows someone that would like to really come together because 500 Dundas is an opportunity to create affordable housing. And there's an RFP, there's process. And so when we think about these things, it's really, really important that if there's an entire room, all of you must know one Indigenous person. Two, if you know one, I'm really excited. But if you know more than five, I'm even more excited. And the Toronto Indigenous Land Trust has a website, and you can tell them, reach out because we need your voice. Your voice is needed today, right now, and when we think about Bill 185. Bill 185 is going to take our voices completely out of the equipment, and then more kinsets, kinset, kinset, kinset. Yep. Basically, kinsets will be all over the place. And so you lose the ability to be able to create these community development plans, like all of these things that are really, really integrally important. And I don't know if any of you guys, has anybody ever done a deputation? Hands up if you've ever done a deputation for the City of Toronto. Aww. <laughs> well, I've done deputations since 2020. I was looking at the Aboriginal Affairs Advisory Committee because I'm like, wow, it's been closed for a bit and then we haven't really had it. But it was since 2020 that I was actually continuously, persistently showing up and making my five-minute deputations. And so when we think about housing and how these processes happen, did you guys know that these developers are talking to the city and other people like years in advance before that big board comes up? Because there's a big board that you guys see and you're like, oh, they're making a big tall building. Well, they've already been talking about that big tall building for many, many years, and they already basically have a plan. And this is all about empowerment, and I see a lot of empowerment all around the circle, and I'm really encouraging whoever you know to find one Nishnabe person, First Station, Métis, Inuit, Toronto Indigenous Land Trust. We're gonna find the 8,000 people, and we're gonna be a voice, and we're taking back the land, and we're going to do a smudging ceremony outside. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, 
comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also follow us on social media, and for more information, check out our website.